Hey guys, I'm continuing my clear night streak and I've actually been craving some super slow astrophotography and not just slow, I've been craving some super long focal length astrophotography as well. And this couldn't come at a better time because I just got a ZWO AM5 mount and I want to see how well it actually tracks. I've seen it on a lot of rigs where it is wide field, but what about a SCT? I mean, I have a ASI 183mm Pro with a one inch sensor. So if I put that camera on the back of my C6, I have an effective focal length of about 2,400. To be exact, it's 2,551 millimeters. That's a lot. And actually, last year I got a SV Boney guide scope, 50 millimeter guide scope, because my uh, 30 millimeter guide scope from ZWO just wasn't doing the job. But it worked really well on my EQ6. But how is it going to work on the AM5 without a counterweight? I have no idea, but I really, really want to find out. So tonight I'm going to shoot the Bubble Nebula. It's something I haven't shot in a really long time. Uh, actually, last year I got a super wide field uh, shot of it, and I did that in full SHO. I'll be doing it in SHO today as well, but the thing is, is I know I'm not going to be getting it in one night like I normally do with Hyperstar. I also have a few other challenges as well, using the 183 and bin 1 is going to severely oversample it. Now, I have no idea what it's going to look like. It might look okay, something I can work with. But if that doesn't work out, I'm actually going to use bin 2. The only problem with bin 2 is the resolution is very low. It's like 5 megapixels at the most. But it should be okay for what I need because I really want this cropped-in view uh, up close and personal style on the Bubble Nebula. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to do a bicolor this time around as well. I, I'm kind of itching for the full SHO palette because it looked cool in my last photo, but I really want a closer view of it. So I guess we'll see on the fly, right? So this should be interesting. A couple nights, you know, I want to get at least a good start on this, so probably I want to try and, and get four hours at least. Uh, total exposure, I think, on this would be 8 to 10, which would be perfect. But again, I'm telling you, this is probably something I'm not going to get done in one night. But we'll see where we end up like we normally do, right? Well, cool. I guess that is the plan for the next few nights. And I have to work one of the nights... Uh, and then we got a big, long weekend coming up, so that's in my favor. So the only thing we got to do is wait till it gets dark and start imaging. Where did I come up with that? That's kind of weird, right? I don't know. <laughs> All right, look at this, guys. Clear skies. I've just been blessed with clear skies. This whole week. I know I keep saying this, but after my winter, it's welcome for this. But do you hear that? Got a concert right next door. So I got a little bit of music. And now that it's day, I think there's like this little road here. I don't know if I could get onto that. See it? I don't know. Honestly, it's just nice being at this dark sky site. Super happy. <laughs> well, I'll be shooting into this area of the sky. So we're see if this is gonna be, and I plan to shoot uh, the Bubble Nebula, as discussed. Uh, I have to go to work tomorrow, so I'm probably gonna only have two hours. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna do two hours in HA, or I'm gonna do an hour in HA and then O3. I'm not really sure. I guess I'm going to feel it. I know I'm not going to complete this project in one night. 
but I'm just craving some really long focal length slow astro you know what I'm saying so I'm gonna get set up get pulling around polar aligned <laughs> and uh, collimate my scope so I came out here a little bit early all right we got the moon up there looks like it's not quite half almost Venus up there of course I don't know if you can see it in there but it's up there it's getting dark and then here it is my scope and SCT configuration man I haven't done this for a really long time <laughs> it just looks kind of badass you know what I mean it's just a little c6 you know pretty versatile I like SCTs but they are they're kind of hard to work with you know what I mean but the effort is more than worth it I mean the one thing I think is cool is like last night I was shooting at 300 millimeters on this thing with Hyperstar tonight I'm gonna to be shooting around 2400 millimeters gonna get a really deep exposure on the bubble nebula which I haven't shot in a long time so I'm pretty excited but yeah awesome night and we got some look at this we got people here listening to the music I don't know if you see it over there it's cars parked here in this alley and, uh, I don't know if you can hear that it's people cheering and stuff it's crazy right also here are my knobs this is the first night I'm gonna be using my 3d printed knobs I designed I don't know how that's gonna work out I mean they they work but I guess we'll see <laughs> you know I forget how cool it is running my scope and SCT configuration because I have a filter wheel on it right now and since I have an EAF I don't need to change filters you know I just got off work I can just kind of sit in my car <laughs> and just do my focusing routine and everything it's it's totally funny man the only thing I had to do was collimate it and I might be a little off tonight we'll see um but my knobs worked really good, man. It was super easy to get that donut in the center, you know what I mean? So I'm pretty happy about that. It's the first time I actually used it. So I just, whenever I pull out this scope, it's always in Hyperstar, you know what I mean? But, all right, my collimation's actually looking really good for just something I didn't spend. I spent like maybe five minutes on it. And I chose bin 2 because it's soaking in so much more light. And since I'm not getting um, a lot of sub exposures, I think bin 2 is the best. And it actually looks a lot better. I, you know, it, I saw it oversampled at bin 1 and it was okay. Like I could probably work with that, but bin 2 is, is just really nice. I. I need a different camera. I'm thinking about getting a 294 just for this purpose, but it's just every so often that I, you know, shoot at longer focal lengths. I don't know if it's worth it or not, but my subs are looking pretty good. I'm uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Well, that was refreshing. I I actually just woke up. I, I fell asleep <laughs> during my imaging session. Uh, the cool thing is since I had a filter wheel and everything, pretty much everything was automated. So the uh, ZWO software focused and switched filters for me and guided and all that stuff. I have like probably 20 minutes left right now. Uh, before I'm done for the night, I can go home and actually go to sleep. <laughs> Here's my scope and everything. I mean, everything's. I don't know, man. It's cool. It just took care of itself. Jeez. I was tired, man. <laughs> well, I'm going to wrap up here pretty soon. Hopefully, I'll have. A photo of the bubble neb. Uh, maybe if I'm lucky, 
this weekend I'll have like maybe another night of clear skies so I can get a little bit more data it'd be nice to get four hours at least you know this is just kind of a good start but um, I definitely need more ex exposure time but it's just been so clear lately I'm just thankful to have a night like this even though I was unconscious <laughs> welcome to night two. Oh yeah on the bubble nebula uh, got another concert going on Tran this is the best night of transparency yet so I'm super excited I decided to sit here extra long I'm going to spend an hour getting some more HA an hour in 03 on the bubble and then uh, S2 I'm gonna get an hour in S2 tonight maybe two hours we'll see how I feel I'm still kind of tired I need some sleep <laughs> but uh, yeah I think I'm gonna have a really nice photo of it check this out got the moon up and it is nice and clear so here's my scope all set up ready for polar alignment excited all right well my imaging is underway right now and here is actually my guiding here and don't mind this I'm watching the Big Bang Theory while I'm uh, <laughs> shooting subs um, this is what it kind of looks like looks like my collimations on too which is great but it's a little dewy right now um, I think I'm gonna turn on my dew heaters. Hold on here. Definitely gonna power that on. I'm a little uh, paranoid, you know what I mean? I just don't want it doing over. I got dew on my windshield right now, so that means dew can collect on a big ol' SET corrector plate, right? Anyways, my guiding's at 0.42 at 2400 millimeters right now, which is pretty awesome. And look at this, check that out. That's not bad at Ben 2, so I think stacked it's gonna, gonna look amazing, you know what I mean? Dude, this red light is super bright, man. It's got another setting on it too. Like, check that out, it's crazy. Anyways, been a pretty nice night tonight. There's the uh, moon, it's half, uh, I think it's 50% pretty much. Concert's over, so it's like super quiet and um, not a cloud in the sky tonight. It's it's amazing. <sighs> Hopefully I'm going to get uh, the subs I need. I might have to take another hour in 03. Because I was looking at my 03 subs and they kind of... I guess it shifted on me during the night. I didn't really notice it before. It's not bad, but the perfectionist in me <laughs> is like... <sighs> I know I should just let it go, and if I was going to stay out here another hour, I should probably get S2 instead, but we'll see. Alright, I'm on my sulfur subs right now. The moon looks like it's about to go down behind the horizon. I figured I'd do a little bit of exploring. Uh, I'm going to walk down this trail here. I know, in the middle of the night, not a great idea, but <laughs> we're going to do it anyways. It's because i falling asleep out there. I fell, took a couple naps. Just need something to do here, you know what I mean? So, got my torch here, so let's kind of see what's going on. Let's see, I don't know if you guys can see that. Looks like a plant farm. 
That's a big... truck right there. Here's where all the frogs are. Oh dang, look, there's like a little trail right here. Wow. See all this? You know what, guys? Right here, to the south, southwest, actually. <laughs> I see Antares. That means Ropiuchus Cloud Complex is up there now. I've never got it from this light polluted area. I, I don't think I can. <laughs> but I know all you astro imagers know what I'm thinking right now, you know what I mean? <laughs> try to plan for a nice night so you can try and get that from somewhere. All right, the moon is definitely below the horizon right now. Just notice the Big Dipper is in position for summer. And the mount just slewed back to home position. So that means that's it for tonight. I got a uh, total right now on the Bubble Nebula. I got two hours in HA, two hours in O3, and one hour and 20 minutes on S2. Uh, hopefully I'll have a nice SHO to work with in the morning. So I guess this is good night guys. I'm gonna sleep in for sure and get some coffee so I'll see you then. Hey guys, good morning. I actually slept in till nine o'clock and as you see, coffee was indeed had. But we definitely did have a good night, didn't we? I don't know, there's something about long or slow actually um, astro for me. I don't know, maybe I just feel nostalgic because that's how I started out before I got a hyperstar. But those were the days where Man, I just have all these clear nights and I could stay out super late. But uh, I, just, I just think I miss it, you know what I mean? I just think I really, really miss it. Anyways, it seemed like I got a pretty good start on the Bubble Nebula. Um, I got, of course, the HA came out just great and whatnot. I'm gonna need a little bit more O3 and also a lot of S2 to get this to come out, but. Like I said, I, I think total integration on this target will be uh, eight to 10 hours uh, for me to get it the way that I wanna get it at, especially at F6, you know what I mean? But one thing I was really impressed with was the AM5 performance. Now, I, I had really great performance with the EQ6, but that was with a counterweight, you know? and. The M5 was tracking just like its counterpart EQ6 with no issues. It, it wasn't even balanced. I, it was just super crazy what that mount does. So I'm good job ZWO, uh, great mount. I'm really enjoying it. It was definitely well worth the price and I can't wait to start more deep sky projects with it later down the road. Well guys, this video is pretty long already. So I think I'm just gonna end it at that. Uh, thank you for joining me on this astro outing or astro adventure or just a uh, astro hangout. I don't know what you call it, but uh, I guess I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace. <laughs>